Hello friends, this is a very short video for the interview purposes on US-Iran predicament, the emerging conditions into the Indian Ocean and their escalatory tactics into the waters of Indian Ocean, the peripheral part of Persian Gulf and Strait of Hormuz and the Gulf of Oman. We have to see this entire problem from the Indian prism, the perspective of India we are supposed to discuss. There are three people we must keep into the mind. Alfred Thahar Mahan, the person who was having an impact onto the foreign policy of USA in the first half of the 20th century. He had compelled USA to be there into the oceans, to be there into the islands, and to have a control onto the portals of world trade. And thereafter, in 19... 40s, 50s and 60s, we had found Nicholas J. Spikeman, the father of containment theory. He had an impact on the foreign policy of USA and throughout the Cold War from 1945 to 1991, USA has been found containing one way or the other former USSR. 1970s onwards, Bernard Lewis, is having an impact on the foreign policy of USA. This person was born in 1916 and his most of the seminal work had been done in uh, 70s and 80s and 90s. This person had promoted the concept of balkanization of the Middle East and North Africa, the MENA area, M-E-N-A, Middle East and the North African area. He was of this opinion, this entire region must reduce to an arc of crisis. Otherwise, there will be a clash of civilization. The concept of Bernard Lewis was picked up by Samuel E. Huntington afterwards. Now, here we have to see that USA is having an impact since 1973 onwards of Lewis doctrine onto his onto its foreign policy. USA has imposed crippling sanctions on Iran and one thing we have to keep in mind that Iran is just emerging out of the devastating floods. 25 of its 31 provinces have an impact of the last floods. All provinces are struggling. They are emerging out of the distress. And at the very right time, the USA has imposed, imposed the crippling sanctions and the economy is really in a dire state. Republicans, Democrats have a different way to look at the international problems. Somewhere we find Democrats are a bit moderate. This moderation we had found in Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action 2015 when the treaty was, when, when the agreement was signed. But Republicans have always been found waging wars and they are in the process of making US arms suppliers happy by creating venues to test show off and the supply of weaponries. In 2017, this catch up that is countering American adversaries through Sanctions Act is no less than an arm twisting and hampering the sovereignty of the nations. This is somewhat you can say a fear that was aroused in the minds of the countries intending to have bone homing with Iran. JCPOA, this is Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action 2015. It is an understanding among the members of uh, United Nations Security Council, the permanent members, Germany, European Union as the witness, and Iran. And somewhere the European nations have promised in support of trade exchange, they are going to pass on the humanitarian aid, which will keep Iran into this treaty. And this is happening since 2015. 
But why USA has repealed this JCPAO, POA, that is Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action? There are five basic reasons behind it. Number one, USA does not want Iran to develop nuclear bomb. Second one, USA does not want Iran to sponsor terrorism. And third one, USA seeks peace for its proxies in the region called Middle East and North Africa. USA seeks lesser but positive role of Islamic Brotherhood. And the fifth one, USA seeks a renegotiated nuclear deal to the appeasement of Israel, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates and the Western Allies. There are explicit reasons and implicit reasons why USA has done that. Now two of the straightway explicit reasons which are visible. Donald Trump says, the Republicans say, that the deal JCPOA, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, is defective. It is not able to restrict Iran from proliferation in enrichment of the uranium for fuel and weapons. Second explicit reason, there is a trust deficit between the nations, USA and Iran, since 1979 Islamic Revolution and the rise of the supreme leader, the Khomeini's. USA considers Iran as a power focusing on destabilizing the regional peace and yoking in maximum of its finances to upset the proxies of the USA is in this region. Though there is SWIFT, S-W-I-F-T, Society for World Wider worldwide interbank financial telecommunication and it has its base in Brussels, Belgium. US impact is so much visible on it and we had found it has got instructions from USA and has frozen all the interactions with Iran. What are the implicit reasons now? Let's see. Why USA is doing this? Forcing Iran a better deal will be incremental for Donald Trump to stage a comeback in 2020 presidential election. We cannot rule out this possibility. Second one, USA is now self-dependent on oil. It is no longer dependent on the oil of the Middle East. It is having maximum of its bonanza of uh, uh, shale gas and shale oil and its technology is improving by leaps and bounds and this war will create a hydrocarbon crisis and that is going to give a much needed push to renewable energy sources somewhere USA is interested that at least not the world but Europe must escalate its hold on to the renewable energy sources and to decrease dependence onto the oil and the natural gas of Russia. That is the second implicit reason we can work out. We have to recall a scholar of Harvard School of uh, Learning that is Edward Lutwek. That person had coined a term, the logic of strategy in the grammar of commerce. He said, that there are nations which are having high growth rate and low inflation rate can be a problem for USA and the Northwest Europe. There are multiple nations in South, Southeast and East Asia. Those who are having high economic growth rate, low inflation rate and are bound to replace the West. Edward Ludwig says, by creating a crisis into the hydrocarbons, the pace of the economic growth of such nations can be slowed down. This is very negative and passive way of thinking, but this is a reality. This oil crisis will dampen the pace of Chinese economy and their Belt and Road Initiative. So if we talk about 
uh, former advisor of uh, uh, you can say former economic advisor Arvind Subramanian on carbon imperialism what he says the strategy denying access to the coal and other hydrocarbons in the name of climate change and thereby hurting the growth prospects of the developing countries somewhere urgencies are declared by creating the fear of war or waging the wars and on the other end by the name of climate change this kind of you can say strategy is being promoted by denying the access to the coal now let's take iran's point of view there are five things that we have to keep in mind the very first one the sanctions which were imposed by usa have been taken no less than economic imperialism second president donald trump is passing on laws statements which iran has not taken lightly they have taken a very serious note especially about the genocidal elimination of the civilization of iran third thing there is a religious drive going on in iran hatred for us is maximum and the political leaders the supreme leaders the president of iran they know how to ride on this wave and to create an environment of war into the country iran is having undulating landscape terrain is tough friction of terrain is maximum it is much more than what the graveyard of empire had for usa that is afghanistan afghanistan is full of natural hideouts even mother of all bombs mob was not able to do much damage is there 90% of iran is replete with natural hideouts fold mountains deserts undulating sand dunes only 10% is a plain area once with 1.2 lakh armed forces if usa enters into iran they are going to have a very long time they will take a long time to get over and the regime change is going to be a tough time for them mount zagros and elbers they are having perfect natural hideouts usa is going to have a tough time there and the fifth thing definitely iran is going to take lot of time they will try to procrastinate and prolong the situations they will also wait till 2020 maybe republicans will be out of the power and the democrats may come in and again the similar kind of joint comprehensive plan of action plan of action may set in now what is the indian stance let's understand it india has remained the second largest buyer of the oil of iran nearly 10% of the total imports of india it comes from iran this is first aspect we are dependent on iranian oil second one iranian oil is cheaper and it's more proximate it's very close third one iran conducts bilateral trade in indian rupee and amicably deals in all the monetary issues fourth one india will be bound to purchase expensive shale oil and shale gas from the us if crisis escalates and the entire persian gulf that passes on 25% oil of the world that trade comes to an end or it's you can say uh, to some extent it is restricted scumping to arm twisting through ketsa will be an attack on indian sovereignty exercising independent foreign policy is our top priority india should not scum to the pressure mounted by usa the war of the state of hormuz will be disastrous for india india is going to see energy crisis and it's going to see the escalation of the the prices inflation of the prices inflation of the prices of the goods essential goods iran is a golden gate for india we know that our air corridor to afghanistan is a bit expensive one international north south corridor to zahedan 
from Chabahar to Ashgabad into the Central Asia can turn the tables. Central Asia is dear to us and just we want to open our choices along with the western border of Pakistan through Afghanistan so that venue will all, we will always utilize. Though we are having very philanthropic approach of community based development programs in Afghanistan but Iran is a golden gate for India which we cannot lose and we do not want to name our investments in Chabahar as bad investments. If we say no to Iran, definitely, this is, you know, the eighth, we can see, viewpoint. Reducing oil imports to zero, which we have done already in the month of May, we will further improve our relationship with Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, and, and, and Israel. A nuclear Iran is not good for India. In the longer run, especially in the Indian Ocean, it will definitely flex its maritime muscles and will try to create a you know, parallel power cluster and uh, nuclear proliferation in Iran is not in favor of India. Now what should India do? Four things we have to think about, a kind of way forward. India always promotes South-South cooperation. There should be efforts to diffuse the intense war possibilities in Persian Gulf, Strait of Hormuz and the Gulf of Oman. Second thing, India must diversify its oil supplies. We have to increase our dependence at other places. There is Brent oil, North Sea, Arctic oil, Venezuelan oil and already we have started piling up our efforts in Venezuela. Third one, India must work seriously on renewable energy sources. Already our percentage in power generation in renewable energy sources has touched 21.1%. And we have to reduce our dependence on hydrocarbons. And the fourth one, India must work on perfect evacuation plans in case things are escalated beyond negotiations. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, UAE, Oman, at every place lakhs of Indians are living there. We must think, you can say, on the evacuation plan and that is the step four. India must think as a way forward. Thank you.